Good day, my friends. May God bless everyone abundantly as He wants. I know He wants to bless abundantly, but He blesses those who believe. Those who don't believe, stay out of it. It's of no use for one to think that things will happen in the life without believing. She has to believe. A good day to all. A pleasure to be once again with you in these days of the fast of Daniel. We are together in this faith, in this assurance that God will do great things in our lives. We would like to pass to you all a revelation, the revelation we passed yesterday and we are going to pass to those who believe, to those who want a revelation, who want to know what God wants in their lives, people who are thirsty for the revelation of the Word of God. So we will pass to you, it's something very simple, very simple, but extremely powerful, extremely powerful. It's simple to understand, it is simple to comprehend, it is simple to practice, and it's simple because you do not pay anything, it's free. But only those who trust in God truly, and they know God, but it's the belief, Esther, the belief which everybody thinks they have, and it's not. Belief is followed by obedience. It's followed by an attitude which is concrete, true, real. So belief is not something we could say something theoretical. Oh, I believe in God. No. She needs to be practical. God, if it depended on a theoretical faith, everyone would be filled with the plenitude, with the blessings of God. Everyone. Because everybody believes in God somehow, in their own way. But that's not how it is. They need to believe according to his word. Jesus said, whoever believes in me, as the scripture says, not as religion says, not as men say, not as the school of theologies say, but as the holy scriptures say. So we will evaluate the scripture which is what the Lord Jesus taught us and left a precious, glorious, powerful teaching to those who truly believe. Let's see now the scripture. And the prayer Jesus said and taught the disciples when he said, Lord, teach us to pray. Then he said, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Look, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. So we already know who is leading the word, directing the word. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. So your kingdom come upon whom? That's the first question. When a person prays, when I say the Lord's Prayer, I say, Lord, your kingdom come in my life. Let your will be done in my life as it is done there in heaven. So look, when I speak to God, I put these words to my personal life. When I say, your will be done, I am eliminating my will. 
I eliminate my own dreams, my desires, my personal projects. I am placing all my life on the altar of God, saying, your will be done in my life. Do whatever you will to be done. So when I take these words in truth, in reality, I make, I practice it. I don't just say, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, blah, blah, blah. No. When I was a Catholic and I would sin, I'd commit a sin, the priest would say, go and say 10 prayers of Ave Marys and five of the Lord's Prayer. So I would go and do the prayer of Ave Maria and then the Lord's Prayer. I would go there and repeat words, just repeat words. I repeated words. This happens in evangelical churches as well. People repeat these words. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Lies. They are lacking everything because the Lord is not their shepherd. So my friends, let us understand what these words, what these simple words have to teach us, to pass to us. A life of prosperity, a blessed life, a life with God, a life in communion with God. When God called Abraham, God said, Abraham, leave your country, leave your family, leave your father's house, which means place your life in my hands. Allow me to direct, let me do my will in your life and you shall be what you want to be. You shall become what you want to become and much more than you could imagine because you want a son. I want to give you as many children, as many descendants as the sand on the seashore. So this is the reality, my friends. If you do not make personal and the word of God and bring it into your life to practice them in your life you'll be a destroyed believer or a fanatic or weakened or lost anywhere and what we most see in this world are people like this why? because they do not they do not materialize the word inside of them they do not put these words as a fact, a reality in their lives. When I pray the Lord's Prayer, first I say, My Father in heaven, my Father, my heavenly Father. I'm telling him that only he is my Father. I don't have a father nor mother. They've passed on, but even if they were alive, my Father is the heavenly Father because I was born out of my father and mother. But when I met Jesus, Jesus led me to be called and become a child of God. So I ceased being my parents' child to be a child of my heavenly father. So my heavenly father, hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name in my life, in my life, in my life, in my day to day. I continue, your kingdom come, which means your kingdom come into my life. First, I say into my life, may you do your will in my life. Forget my will. I want to do your will because Jesus lived his entire ministry all his life only to do the will of the Father, only to do the will of the Father. So if he, Jesus, the Son, of God, God himself incarnated, wanted to do the will of his father. Imagine me, a mere man, an insignificant man, filled with flaws and weaknesses, mistakes, filled with sins, at times living a life which displeases God. It's not possible. It can't be. So we need to have this profile of Jesus. We need to place Jesus 
as our referral. Because although being the Son of the Almighty, He learned through that which He suffered. So we learn through the things which we suffer. However, when we want to do the will of the Father, when we want to do, or rather have His will done in our lives, it's obvious that he will do his will as it's done in heaven. Imagine they're in heaven. If an angel disobeys the voice of God, I doubt his will there in heaven is perfect. So I want his will in my life to be perfect. Whatever you want, Lord, what do you want to be done? I'll obey, I'll obey. So when I enter this spirit, I begin to live in heaven because there in heaven, his will is done in all his plenitude. And on earth, if I do his will, or rather if he does his will in my life and I obey this will, then I will be living a piece of heaven wherever I go. I'll be the blessing itself as God spoke and promised to Abraham. So this is the reality. So if I need to do a work, I need to travel, if I need to execute anything, then I say, oh my Lord, let your will be done in my life. So if I do this, if I put all my strength in this will of God, then if I take the first row, it'll go well. If I tick the second row, I'll succeed. The first row as well as the second row. Only if I tick the middle one, then it won't go well. But to be in this kingdom, one needs to have this Lord. And to have this Lord, you need to obey this Lord. And because men sinned, he lost the image of God. So God brought us once again to have the image of the Almighty, which is to have the presence of the Holy Spirit. So a person is inspired. She belongs to this kingdom, the ordinances of this kingdom. So that's it. When one is baptized with the Holy Spirit, she's sealed. She is stamped by God. It is as if God had said, would say, this one is mine. No one touches. No one messes. This is mine. He's mine. This is powerful. I can say this to you as a witness, a personal testimony, because you know me. You've been keeping up with me for 40 something odd years of work just in the Universal Church of the Kingdom of God over 40 years, a generation. And you have heard everything worthless about me. Many of you used to speak bad against me. Today you're here with us. This is not true. But many who hated me who hated me, who wished for my death, evil against me. They even did works of witchcraft, sorceries to destroy me. They were destroyed. And politicians, people in power, rich people, people of authority way above my authority, we could say, here on earth. But all of them fell, one to one side and the other, and the other side, and I'm still here, still here. Over 40 years, we have been victims of all forms of evil, perverse, fake news, false news, criminal, thief, liar, deceiver, Everything worthless I have been called, but I'm here. The umbrella of this Lord. Because if I do His will, no one will touch me. But now, if I do not do His will, if I want to do my will, 
Aí eu não tenho garantia. Then I have no guarantee. Then I'm not in the shelter of God. I do not have his angels protecting my steps. So this is how it works. This is how it is. This conscience needs to happen. Perhaps you're someone who believes in God, but you don't believe wholeheartedly. Do you know why you do not believe? Because you do not want to do His will. You do not seek to do His will. You do not seek to be His servant. So it does not match. It can't be. How can someone who claims to believe in God not do his will? How can this person say that she believes in God? It's a lie. She's a liar. She's a pretender, a deceiver. And this is why these people, they fill churches. They are mere weed which grows amongst the wheat. They grow with strength. There's that on top of it. But at the right time, the weed, or rather the wheat is separated. It's placed in God's barn and the weed is thrown into the fire of hell. My friends, take care of your soul. Evaluate this because this revelation there is for those who truly want, those who are sincere. I didn't know this. If I knew already, I would have already practiced it long ago. Very well. Very well. So here's this revelation in order for you to practice it as of now. So, for example, you go to a doctor. You go to a doctor. The doctor examines your examination. He says you have this problem, you have that problem, you need to take care of yourself, all right, etc., etc. What do you say inside of your heart? Let the will of God be done. Let the will of God be done. May the sickness be for the glory of God. If you're going to make business, seal a deal. You say, my God, I'm going to seal this deal, but I want your will to be done above all. Let your will be done. If this deal goes well, then his will is being done. If not, God's will will be done because God will have something even better for you there ahead. That's how it works. So just look. You are dating. You're engaged to a young man or a young lady. Very well. You're already planning to get married on such and such day. But if by any means you say to God, Oh my Lord, I'm engaged. I'm already committed to this person. But if it is not your will, please, my Father, let your will be done. Remove from my life this person. And do not allow her to suffer much. No, me, I don't want to suffer much. And bring the right person, but let your will be done. So when you put your marriage, your engagement, your future in the hand of God, I doubt that your life will be the same rubbish it has been thus far. I doubt, I doubt. Because he'll take care of you. Because his will will be done in your life as his will has been done there in heaven. Look how wonderful. And do you think that the heavenly father wants the worst for you? He wants the worst for us. Do you think he wants more or less? No, he only wants the best, the best. But for the best to take place, you need to desire to do his will. Besides that, you will suffer. Although believing in Jesus, although being a believer, although being a tither, being whatever you are. Because it only takes place, it only happens when you put your life. His will has to be above and not ours. And it complements with the first commandment. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, which means your will is available to this Lord, is at His disposal. So according to how you demonstrate that you love and obey, trust and saying, let your will be done. You know, Esther, I get revolted at times. At times a person says, oh, Bishop is crazy. Look at him. Look at him. Look there. Mm, what happened now? That's it. My revolt is great. I feel this revolt inside of me for the situation. How many people who are believers they have membership cards of 10, 20, 30, 50, 60, 80 years, but they are demon-possessed, disturbed, possessed, because they insist in saying, 
that they are servants of God, but deep down inside they serve truly their will, their flesh, their hearts, their desires, their will, their covetousness, their sins. They serve Baal. They serve, they have been serving mammon instead of serving God. Because when a person serves God, she is a different person. Different, distinguished from all the other people. She transmits life because the spirit of the Almighty is inside of her. And I become revolted. Do you know why, my dear friends? I become revolted because I know the great desire of God, the immense desire, majesty of the Almighty to enter inside of you, dwell inside of you, make it you His habitat, His holy dwelling place, a, a vessel, even if it's made out of mud, out of clay rather, but with a glorious content, which is the Holy Spirit. He wants this more than you. He, wa he wants to give you the Holy Spirit more than you. He wants to dwell inside of you, but He cannot enter your life anyhow. He cannot enter your life simply because He wants to enter your life. No, He needs. He, ne he needs. He requires your permission. You too. Invite Him. I want, I want to do your will. I want to be a vase in your hands. I want to be an instrument in your hands. I want to be your will on this earth as your son Jesus was. When a person says this, then Jesus comes rushing to rescue her. This is why people have been baptized with the Holy Spirit, even in prison, not in the church, but inside of a prison cell. We have the Temple of Solomon. People have come here to the Temple of Solomon. But still, even like this, not everyone has received the Holy Spirit because these people bring hypocrisy within themselves. They speak only words. As I used to say when I was a Catholic, our Father watch in heaven will be done, blah, 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 blah. Ave Maria, blah, 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 blah. It was just mere words from my mouth outwards. Either you are or you are not. Be transparent. Let's rid you. Let's cast out the mask. The mask that has impeded you from receiving the Holy Spirit. The mask which has impeded the descent of the Holy Spirit upon your life. Be who you are. If you're a criminal, if you're a good person, oh Lord, I'm a criminal or I'm a good guy. I'm this, I'm that. But I want, I want to do your will. When you do this, you are placing yourself in the position, the ideal position of a servant of God. And then, yes, the Lord will do His will through you in His, in your life. And it's like the weeds. The person is proud. She doesn't want to hear anyone. She thinks she knows everything. And the wheat is the opposite. Yes, Lord, your will be done. So the wheat, it curves, it bends. It's not like the weed which stands up. The wheat is humble to accept, I know nothing, I need God in my life. I need His direction, His inspiration, that His will may be done in my life. This is total trust. This analogy of the wheat and the weed is very interesting because the weed is like this. It's got His nose sticking up. But the wheat is like this. It's fallen. It inclines. It bends. And the fruits obviously are completely different. It weighs. The wheat weighs because it's got fruit. The weed has no fruit. That's why it stands. It doesn't have much weight. Going back to our meditation, which I would not, I don't want you to forget. Just look. Your kingdom come. Jesus taught his disciples, his followers, his apostles. He taught all those who have sound mind and want to obey. He taught them the secret of life. Your kingdom come, O oh Lord, reign in my heart. The Bible says, my friends, 
that the heart, as a matter of fact, God himself said that the heart is deceitful. It is desperately corrupt. Who can know it? So if you do not have the Holy Spirit directing your heart, then who will direct it? You. The devil. Who? One of the two, either the devil or you. And then you will suffer what you have been suffering. Because the heart is the center of our emotions, of our decisions. And when a person says, your kingdom come upon me, upon my life, upon my heart, upon my mind, I want my life to be to serve you for your glory. I want my life to be your will. I want my life to serve you in truth. For this is to be a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. He is only Lord of those who serve him. Jesus is only Lord of those who serve him. Of those who say, your will be done in my life. And when one truly, sincerely says this prayer, says these words with sincerity and brings them to themselves, practices them in their lives, then something new in their lives must happen. It must happen. The kingdom of God must happen in their lives. You need to be happy. Why? Because it's impossible for a person who says a sincere prayer as this one. And on the other side is God who mostly wants, he's anxious if we could say this, God truly, truly, deeply, desperately wants to make you his dwelling place inside of us in order for you to get to know him truly. In order for you to tell people, listen, the God whom I serve, who has done his will in my life, this God exists and wants to do the same in your life. And for your life to show, to prove a difference from the lives of others. This is the reality. We live in a world filled with hatred, with confusion. We live in a world filled with violence. A world filled with immorality, everything which is worthless. So when one decides on her own, oh Lord, let your will, your kingdom come upon you, upon my life. Let your will be done in my life the same way as this will is done in heaven. And then it's done. It's not a propaganda, a deceitful commercial which people make of products. God calls for salvation, peace, joy, happiness. So I do not understand why people are so inquisitive instead of grabbing onto this kingdom, why are they so attached to other things which only bring pain and suffering? When, a, when the kingdom of God offers salvation, peace, joy, happiness, you can verify, for example. And we can speak about this. You see that we preach and we live that which we preach. There's a difference. We live that which we teach. So here's the difference. Because first we assume our faith in God. When we met, I've, I've said this before and I'll repeat. When we met, you were already happy, Esther. I cannot speak about you, but I can speak about myself. I was already happy. I did not marry you to become happy. Neither did you marry me to get happy. No. We were already happy. Why? Because the kingdom of happiness, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of the Holy Spirit had already been planted in us. So we were already happy. When we got married, we added, we joined our happiness. This is why we are for 47 years, approaching 48 years of marriage. So we live this. And we speak to you, we are here every Saturday, especially 
speaking to you about what we live. It's a reality. You who live a defeated life in your marriage, you who live a defeated life, why do you live, live this defeated life? It's simple. You were not happy. Neither was he or she. He was not happy either. So, when one unhappiness joined with the other unhappiness, the two in search of happiness, how can this be? How can an unhappy person and another unhappy person join to become happy? On the contrary, nonetheless, the unhappiness of one will join with the unhappiness of the other and both will both be happy, unhappy rather. This is why there's divorce, people get married and unmarry this and they marry and unmarry, they divorce, oh, I don't want to get married anymore, I just want to date and spend time with you. It becomes what? A piece of hell because they do not accept the suggestion of God. They do not accept the suggestion of the Almighty. God created all things perfectly. He is great. And this is why only He does great things. Even if your life is disgraced, it's in ruins, your marriage is destined to failure. It doesn't matter, my friend. When you say, oh my God, now, I want you to reign inside of me, in the person of your spirit, and do your will in my life. Do you know what will happen? He will direct you to happiness. Let me speak here to those of you, something that took place in our lives. When I met Esther, Esther was engaged to a young man. And she had broken up that engagement because she saw that he was not of God. Although she liked him, you liked him, didn't you? A lot, more than me. I said this prayer. I used to say this prayer, let your will be done. So this is why God brought me to you, because I also said this prayer. I would also say this prayer, oh Lord, your will be done in me. I was also engaged. Esther was engaged on one side, I was engaged on the other side. We were both engaged to two different people. But look what happened. God heard our prayer. Let your will be done in our lives. That was it. When we did this, for example, my engagement, I was about to get married. I had practically everything ready, but everything was undone. And so we joined our pieces and until today we're together. We are witnesses that this prayer happens. This is... Be intelligent. Use your mind instead of using your heart, which is corrupt, deceitful, lying, which has only led you to defeat, to misfortune. Use your mind. You have a mind. You suffer because of your heart, which is deceitful. But if you use your mind, you are intelligent, you have reasoning, you can think. Use your intelligence. God, the Lord Jesus teaches, the Lord Jesus these are the words of the Lord Jesus. It was not a, just a random prophet or an apostle. No, it was the Lord Jesus himself who said, pray like this, pray in this manner. Your kingdom come upon me. In this case, it's you. Your kingdom come upon me. And let your will be done. This prayer is individualistic. It's individual. I cannot say, Lord, let your kingdom come upon her. Because if she does not want your kingdom, what can I do? Of what good is it? So I pray because I want, oh God, I want your kingdom inside of me. I want to do your will. Serve yourself in me. So it happens because Jesus said this and he promised. And the father, will he say no? Will his father reject my prayer, which his son taught me to do? By no means. The Lord Jesus he said, the Lord Jesus himself said, which son asked his father for bread will receive a stone. If you who are evil know how to give your children good gifts, the father will give you his spirit. 
For those who ask, but they have to ask with sincerity. They have to ask with loyalty. One cannot ask the Holy Spirit to get married to an, Oh, I want that guy there. Give me the Holy Spirit because... And also bring him to me. No. It's his will. Because he knows the future. He knows who's best for you. He knows who adapts best with you. For example, you see me as an explosive person. You know, the way I am. This is the way I am and I'll always be and after 74 years I won't change. So I am like this. But look at Esther. She's relaxed, she's tranquil, she's calm. I knew you needed someone like this. I needed the still waters, a break. My friends, it's to be great. It must be great. It is for you to be perfectly happy. You might have problems. We have problems. Problems at work, our day-to-day -day challenges for people, leading people to the Word of God. We overcome people's problems. We have personal problems, the problems on the outside. But we, personally, she and I, we do not have problems. As a matter of fact, I usually say this. What can God add in our lives? I do not know, but if there's something he will add, he already did with his, he completed through his spirit. Those who have the Holy Spirit are happy, my friend. They do not get married to be happy. They get married to make someone happy. Someone has the Holy Spirit, but those who do not have, they go in that search and that hope of being happy. And then, of course, it will not happen because, because happiness depends on the Spirit which reigns in us. When it is the Holy Spirit, then He will make us live this happiness. You see, as the testimony of this accountant, she had an evil spirit which asked for 150 fruits from Brazil. And she went there like a mule. She went there to the mountain to take those fruits. And when she got there, she fell and got hurt. And she complained with the entity and the entity said, no, but she didn't do it properly. There were three fruits missing. This is so strong. This is so strong. People do not think. This is why they mess up. They allow themselves to be led by the deceitful heart, the heart of the devil, the ideas of the devil. So, my friends, use your intelligence. Read the Bible. Read and absorb it to yourself. Take the words of Jesus for yourself, for yourself personally, and you will see that your life will change because the kingdom of God will be implemented in you and His will will be done and you'll be happy because His will is to make us to be happy. This is the truth. And this is the counsel of the most wise. It's not just any thinker. It's the one who is the most wise, is the worst, most wise. He passes you the secret of life which is to do His will. We were going to pray for you, but we will not pray for you. Do you know why? Because I see that many pray, people just ask, oh, pray for me, oh, bishop, pray, 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 oh, bishop. My dear friends, if you want, if you want a prayer tomorrow, at any universal church of the kingdom of God, there are many people spread throughout over 7,000, as a matter of fact, 14,000 pastors, over 7,000 churches available for you to go and receive a prayer and be delivered from this curse that is in your life. Okay? Until tomorrow, may God bless you all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Praise be to God.